good damn afternoon, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again. Now, friends, the world is in serious danger now. Inflation is causing food prices to skyrocket. The global supply chain continues to collapse, and the coming food shortages will be worse than anything we've ever lived through. In times like these, what should you do? Go to preparewithjericho.com and invest in long-term emergency food from My Patriot Supply while you still can. My Patriot Supply is the largest preparedness company in America with millions of satisfied customers. Their food lasts for up to 25 years in storage, and when you need it, you will have it and you won't have to stand in government food lines. And quickly, act and save $150 on a vital three-month emergency food kit. This kit provides a variety of delicious foods and totaling over 2,000 calories per day. You won't go hungry when you have this emergency food, period. Go to preparewithjericho.com and save $150 on every three-month emergency food kit. That's preparewithjericho.com. Protect your family. Secure this emergency food today. Preparewithjericho.com. So, of course, unfortunately... Um, a bunch of people lost their lives needlessly and needlessly in a lot of different ways. But in case you haven't heard, um, on Saturday, 10 people were killed, three injured at a Topps grocery store in Buffalo, New York. And by all accounts, this was racially motivated. The kid, he was some 18 year old piece of shit. And he had all this stuff online about all these different beliefs and he hated black people or whatever, blah, blah, blah. He wrote a bunch of stuff on his rifle, the rifle, the uh, AR-15 um, that he used, appeared to be an AR-15. They call it an assault rifle, of course. Um, and he was kind of weird. You know, they talked to people who he went to school with. Um, they said that when they came back from school, from the, basically the school year that they lost due to the sweet and sour sniffles, that he came to school in a full hazmat suit, the boots and the gloves and the respirator and everything. And everybody thought he was kind of weird. Um, some other things he did that were kind of weird. But he had just spent a, a school year at home in front of a computer. I wonder why. I wonder if they have any, had any adverse effects on him. What? Who said that? Sorry, guys. thought somebody was somebody else was in here talking. Um, but seemed to be a weird kid. He was quiet whenever they talked to some of his teachers. And so, but I, I, I'm watching the information come in and I'm, I'm thinking and everything. And so it was racially motivated. So of course they're calling it a hate crime, which is fucking stupid because if you kill somebody, you should get the same penalty, no matter the color of the person. When you do that and call it a hate crime and you enhance the sentence for that, you're saying that those lives are worth uh, more than those who don't fall inside of that category, which is fucked up. Um, but he drove, apparently drove over 200 miles to this particular store because of the concentration of black folks. Um, the country or the country, the city or town that he lived in was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, he selected that target. But I don't know. It's just a lot of things. Some just these are some questions that I wrote down that that were coming to my mind. Um, oh, before I talk about what this fucking waste of space did. Shout out to Aaron Salter. He was the security guard who was there. He was a former Buffalo PD. Uh, by all accounts, everybody liked him. He ran a tight ship. Uh, I'll talk about a guy later who, had he not been doing his job so well, that guy would have been there and probably gotten killed. Um, he was a good guy. Did his job well. Everybody liked him. He did what he was hired to do. Uh, very respectful. And he engaged the shooter and shot him. But he had body armor on. So it didn't do anything. He returned fire and killed uh, the security there, Mr. Adam Salter. Um, so here are just some of the questions that I have. Why didn't he drive to Syracuse? That has a high concentration of black folks there, and it's less than half the distance from where he ended up at that Topps grocery store. Um, and why didn't he make use of all the body armor that he had on. Now he had, he did engage the security guard and got shot, but he had a helmet on, he had a flak jacket on. So 
why didn't he shoot it out with the police? Was all that armor just for um, the security guard that he would come in contact with? Um, maybe. And why is this? Uh... So the guy that he was talking to, there's an interview out there. And if I can find a, a, a link to it, I'll put it in the description box. But there's this guy, this black guy who was from the area. He hung around out there. I don't know whether he's homeless or not. But he would sit on the bench in front of the store and talk to, to the passersby and everything. And Mr. Salter, being the good security guard that he was, he, you know, he told him that day, Saturday, he said, hey, keep, you know, keep it moving. No, no loitering. Keep it moving. So he did. He got his stuff and he, he got out of there. And then the shooting happened. So had Mr. Salter not been on his on his game, that's a, another potential victim. But that guy that he told that to, he was giving an interview and he was saying that he talked to the shooter the day before for almost two hours. And they talked about a variety of things, all these different theories and the beginning of life and all this stuff, the economy. And they went their separate ways. They had an in-depth conversation and went their separate ways. And, and it's, I know, by what they found so far they say it's racially motivated and you look at the things that he wrote on his gun. And that's something I thought was weird too. Why write those things on his gun? Like, was he planning on dying? Like, why would you write, who were those messages to? You know, all that you, you're the one who wrote it. You have those feelings. So why would you need to write it on your gun? Unless you wanted somebody to see that. Um, so he had an in-depth conversation with this guy and then 24 hours later came in and killed a bunch of black folks. What was he thinking in his mind while he was talking to a potential victim like this, he did some, he did some recon. He did some, some, uh, he went there before and he studied the area. He, he did research on the area. He did research on his target. So what was in his, what was in his mind talking to somebody he hated for almost two hours and why spend that time? Why spend the time talking to somebody that you hate, that you want to die for almost two hours? Why waste the time? Was he trying to uh, have a uh, an interaction with a black person to talk himself out of it or something? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me that someone who, who's engaged, who's going to engage in homicidal rage in 24 hours would have a conversation that long and that in-depth with a potential victim. Um, so that was weird. And the guy, he, was, he, did, he, he carpet bombed that area with truth bombs. He didn't give a damn who was listening who was watching, this man was speaking the truth and he was talking about how, you know, had there been armed people there, they could have stopped him from killing more people. Had we had more armed citizens, well-trained armed citizens, he says it has to start from the bottom to the top because they're not going to do anything. The government ain't going to do shit. They've proven that to us. They're not going to do shit. Our safety is up to us. Yes, we have police, but police are a reactionary force. The police didn't show up until people were already shot. That's how you have to call the police. You have to notify the police of an issue. But we, the people, are there when the issue starts. So I know New York City, it's a bitch to get a gun. But is it a bitch to get, uh, to get a CCW or something or in, in New York, the state of New York? I know New York's not an open carry state, is it? Because New York City hasn't gotten the message. But how hard is it to, to, get a, to carry a weapon, to carry a firearm in New York State? Um, but he... Of course, that's a great point. Why would we, the people, not be the first line of defense? Would they, they never talk about the millions of interactions where guns save people, where guns save the good people and take out the bad guy or stop the bad guy from harming good guys in the first place because he sees the guns. Of course, it's in the Constitution. We should all be able to carry, carry firearms. And this is not, when these things happen, this is not an excuse for them to infringe on our Second Amendment rights. What this was is a mentally unstable piece of garbage who decided to kill people. That has nothing to do with the rest of us law-abiding citizens. We are in no way going to engage in that behavior because we are in possession of a gun. The guy again said in the video, he said, it's not the gun, it's the person holding the gun who's acting a fool. That is where the danger is. There and lies the problem, is the person, not the weapon. It's a tool. Screwdrivers don't jump up, up, jump up out of your toolbox and start stabbing people. 
It would take a human to do that because a screwdriver is a tool. But just because this shit happens, it's not a time for them to start talking about and pushing comprehensive gun reform. The gun laws have already been reformed in the Constitution. They took care of it already. Why do they do this? That's not okay. You're not supposed to talk about tightening the reins on gun ownership because some dumbass goes out and does something evil. That doesn't make us evil. They always pull that shit. And why now? People are waking the fuck up. They're seeing the inflation. They're seeing the crime. They're seeing how we handle things internationally. And they're getting sick of it. But what's the one well they can always throw the corrupt bucket down in and pull up something, pull that bucket up overflowing? What's the one well they can always go to when they have a problem? Say it with me. Starts with an aura. Racism. You got it? That never fails. So when things are looking bad, things are looking grim, they can't see the sun on the horizon, what do they do? They take that big ass bucket and they throw it down the racism well. And you better believe when they haul it back up, it is overflowing with that beautiful racism. They want shit like this to happen, but it shouldn't. What that person did has nothing to do with the rest of us, has nothing to do with our right to carry a gun and protect ourselves. It's that reinforces the Second Amendment. We need our guns to protect us from people like that. That was a damn grocery store. Everybody goes to the grocery store. And this piece of shit, there was only one victim under 50. A 32 year old woman named Roberta Drury. Everybody else was well over 50. Somewhere in their 60s and 70s, one woman was 86. So this, so this coward went in there and shot a bunch of elderly people. How good would it have been if another armed citizen were to come up behind him, find an area that his armor wasn't covering, and rendered him useless? But it's time for comprehensive gun reform. How? Why? Who are you to say that? You're more crooked than a damn question mark, as my dad would say. And why the talk of, of he was put on a, a mental hold because I guess he did a project and he said that he wanted to engage in a murder-suicide. So he was arrested and, and uh, put on a mental health hold. Now somebody's using the water hose in the backyard. Perfect. But he was put on a mental health hold and then he was released. And then they said that he was uh, threatened. He threatened his high school class or threatened somebody in his high school. Well, what does that have to do with what happened on Saturday? Were they supposed to keep this guy indefinitely just in case he did something crazy in the next two years? Were they supposed to strip him of all his rights and keep him in custody because he threatened somebody? There's no way you can't legislate perfection. There's nothing you can do to stop people from this, like from doing things. Because if they don't want to get caught, they won't get caught. They will play the part. They will put on the mask to get around all your little, your little uh, hurdles to execute their plan. If they need to act a certain way, they will. To get around you and do what they want to do. So you can't legislate. You couldn't have legislated this from happening. You couldn't have stopped this from happening. He was hell-bent on something evil, and that's what he was going to do. So it's everywhere. Racially motivated killing. Well, there was a shooting in L.A. at a grocery store, too, on the same day. Nothing. No talk of gun, comprehensive gun violence. And we we got to do something about guns. Then you had, there was a shooting at an Asian church, also in Southern California. A bunch of old people there too. And there, one dude was 92 years old who got shot. Fortunately, only one person died. Four more were injured. But you know what? Their, their kaleidoscope that they looked through the, that they looked through the do we give a shit about this story? The colors didn't line up. The guy from the shooting in the grocery store in LA, he's still on the lam. The other guy who shot up those Asian people, he was Asian too. That's why they didn't talk about it. Mass shootings though. Four more people. The other one, they're going crazy. This, These two, 
Nothing. Why is that? It's not about our safety. It's about their power. They want us to be unarmed. They want, us, they want it to be so hard for us to get a gun that we give up. You ever call somewhere to get some customer service? And you're on hold for what seems like 24 hours? That's because they're hoping that you give up. They're hoping that they wait you out. That's what they want. The kid bought the gun legally. So if he bought it under your current set of rules, what else are you going to do? This guy was definitely the exception and not the rule. He was an anomaly. You know how many millions upon millions of American citizens own a whole shitload of guns? And never have and never will have any intention on hurting somebody for nothing. They will never go out in public and harm another human being. They're probably some of the nicest people you know. If you knew some of them had guns, you'd probably be like, no, no way, not him, not her. I didn't think you'd know how to shoot one. But that's not the point. None of that matters. We need to have them. We're supposed to have them. We need to have them. Instead of all these empty suits talking about how they need to make it harder for us to get guns, situations like this should tell them to let, to make it easier for us to get guns. Oh, I'm sorry. So politicians already did that and they wrote it down. They made a list. So why don't we just stick to that? Well, those are just some of the questions that I had about this case. Maybe some of them will be answered. Maybe you know the answers. Let me know in the description box. And I haven't seen the, the footage. I, the guy was streaming it on Twitch. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see a bunch of old ladies and old men getting shot. But from what I understand, he had some skills. I don't know if he was out somewhere practicing, reloading his weapon, acquiring targets. But he has been trained. That is not the first time he's done that. I don't know if it's possible for you to play enough video games to where you can get that good with the weapon. But this was not his first time. This was not his first run through of how he was going to do this. And tactical gear and assault. Stop, stop that shit. It's not the gear. It's not the weapon. It's the person. That's the problem. That's what's broken. Guns are not inherently violent. They're not, they're not going to hop off the shelf or out of your safe and hunt people down. That's not what they do. They do what you make them do. They kill who or what you make them kill. Personal responsibility. That is what we need. That is essential. That's a right up there with air and water. Personal responsibility. If somebody's out there acting bad with the gun, we need people out there acting good with the gun. Somewhere in Texas, shout out to my man, uh, Craig Long. They're going to let qualified teachers start carrying guns in a Texas school. Thank you. Israel had a problem with uh, school shootings. Guess what they did? They put security at all the schools. Problem solved. Man, it's, it's, it's sad. But should they, what's a hate crime? What does that mean? Yes, the guy was racist. Yes, he killed a bunch of black folks. Does that mean we live in a racist country? Did Trump somehow have something? If they tie this into Trump. <laughs> and it's probably already been done. But this is somehow his fault. Did this kid watch a video of one of his rallies and it just triggered something in his mind? And it doesn't matter if this kid was on a, a mental health hold or watch list or he threatened. That means nothing. That has nothing to do with what happened on Saturday. If somebody doesn't want you to think something is wrong with them, you won't. Because they're going to go out of the way to make sure you don't. But heart goes out to all those people's families. The victim's families. One guy was just going to get snacks for his movie night, his date night with his wife. Another guy was getting a birthday cake for his grandson. People were out living life. Struck down. 
But then again, in Sacramento, didn't wasn't there a mass shooting a couple months ago, maybe, if that, where six people of color were murdered? Uh-oh. Perpetrator wasn't the right color. They they turned it. They turned the dial, but perpetrator wasn't the right color, so we cannot give that any give a shit. Man, you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings, a piece of shit lefty cries. Utilize the Linktree link. Get your ass over to JerichoGreen.net. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.